Welcome back. It's time for us to take a look at our very first hot topic, and that's on the dispute over presidential election, which has raised calls for amendment of Electoral Act. Stakeholders seek constitutional and Electoral Act amendment. Uh, 2019 governorship candidate of the National Conscience Party, Bishop Funsho Awe of the Orthodox Anglican Church, has called for the review of the Electoral Act to address the lingering dispute over when to inaugurate the winner of a disputed election. There are calls to factor the possibility of a disputed result for a rerun into the timetable for the election. Well, joining us to take a look at this and more, Justice Uwebu, human rights lawyer, has joined us from Abuja. Good morning to you, Mr. Uwebu. Oh, good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure once more. All right. First of all, let me ask you, how satisfied are you uh, with Electoral Act 2022 as amended and the level of compliance so far? Well, for me, um, it is one of the good things that has somehow happened to us in Nigeria. Uh, just like as Rousseau said that um, the law is harmonized with the society. The implication is that the society grows, the law grows alongside with the society. It's an amendment and it has, to, it has captured few things Nigerians have been telling from. But uh, meaning as much as not uh, fully uh, as Nigerians wanted it. Uh, but another problem is the issue of compliance whether it has been complied with uh, citizens so is another problem here. But for me, uh, it's the first time the amendment has been made and uh, we are pushing to do the case. Do I day. take it that you are not fully convinced that it, from what you can see uh, towards the build-up of this election in the course of the aftermath of this election, the 2023 elections, you are not satisfied or convinced that uh, the compliance is, is, is what it should be? No, the compliance is not what it should be. I think every Nigerian knows that, and we all know that, that the compliance wasn't what Nigerians expected. But in any way, or in any case, I think uh, we are moving forward one way or the other. The only problem I have is that uh, I feel that by now, since 1999, INEC has been trying to augment or build up to what has been existing before. But unfortunately, up to now, I felt we should have been, uh, you know, geometrically progressing. But unfortunately, we are not getting that. Okay, so how do you view these calls for the amendment of this Electoral Act? Well, I, I also support that the Electoral Act should be amended further. But that should be after election. Election has come and gone. So we have to also look at it holistically again, uh, considering the flaws, areas of compliance and areas that uh, people or the INEC find it difficult to comply or, you know, something. Because, you see, when a, a law is made, you, you, you practice that law and you begin to see that there might be one or two hitches. Then when you look at it, you now begin to understand the fact that that particular law uh, needs uh, more amendment or expansion. All right. So what are some of the concerns? Let's maybe talk about two or three of some of the concerns you have about this 2023 Electoral Act as amended. There have been the issue of the 25% uh, vote cast that should be gotten by anyone who is declared winner. That has, been, that has generated lots of uh, debate ever since the elections were concluded or conducted. What are some of these um, concerns that you have about this particular electoral act? Well, you know, the issue of 25%, uh, uh, I, for me, I do not see anything wrong there because if you look at the, 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 the spread of Nigeria, as it is, we have to at assistance in the federation, including and uh, including Abuja, with the law says and Abuja, even when you're talking about the state, you think as this state um, of the country and Abuja. So I do not see any much thing. But you see, people have been clamoring and Abuja and Abuja is um, uh, uh, is composer, something like that. But I think uh, we don't want to uh, begin to flood that issue because the court will make an interpretation. 
application to that at the appropriate time. I wouldn't want to frame the court at this point. But again, you talk about the issue of beavers. You see, Nigerians have been so concerned about this issue of beavers, no beavers, and all the rest. And for me, you see, that's what is called convention in law. When people agree to a fact, come together in order to move forward, somehow it becomes a law. But many people do not understand and see it that way that even the electronic transmission of results we are talking about and all the way. There are some technicalities also that are seen uh, in that issue. Because if you look at it holistically, the electoral act did not even provide that beavers must be used. So these are some of the areas because what the INEC did or what the INEC is supposed to do or by their power is to improve or import issues or policies or rules or laws or, or others that should, you know, strengthen the electoral process so that we can have a free and fair election. The issue of beavers, what the issue of beavers came to do is to augment to what has been provided for. But I think that it should be made uh, composite so that it will be part of the law. Okay. Well, there have also been questions about uh, Section 84, Subsection 12. I'm sure you know what that says. You know, no, no political appointees at any level shall be a voting delegate or be voted for at any convention or congress of any political party for the purpose of nomination of candidates for any election. That also has been a question. It's, it's been up in the air. You see, the truth is that the problem we are having is uh, when, uh, when it's political because unfortunately the political parties are the ones, uh, you know, violating and flouting these laws. And unfortunately, our security agents are not living above board. Because if, like, if you remember, in most of my, my interviews, I've always said that the problem, the major problem we have in this country is for the fact that the institutions are not working. If the institutions are working, the political party becomes immaterial. Once an electoral offense has been committed, or people do not comply with the electoral offense, what you do is the security agents will come and get them arrested and prosecute them. Because if you prosecute one, two, three, or four persons, irrespective of whom they are, because we are in a country where we feel that some people are untouchable. And that is why we're getting all these things. Okay, look at what happened in Adamawa, for example. Do we need the, 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 the IGP to issue a statement or to give an order for, for that man to be arrested, for that threat to be arrested, or whatever? So these are some, because these institutions are not working. The executives, they know what they are doing. That is just my problem. It is an act of impunity. If not for an act of impunity by the executive, all these things are supposed to have been a thing of the past. All right, just before you go, Justice, do you support, yes or no, do you support the call that the president-elect should not be sworn in until the cases at the tribunal, are, you know, the, 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 that ju judgment has been given at the tribunals? No, no, no. The truth is that I wouldn't personally support that because uh, 29th of May is sacrosanct. As well, we don't, we don't need to truncate this. This our democracy. So, if it, that is warning or not warning is a matter. Remember that even prior to this time, governors, uh, presidents, or any elected officer is warning, and after some time, if the uh, judgment goes against them, the courts they will, they will move. Once the court makes another or gives a valid judgment by a court of complaint jurisdiction. Now, the question is, the people that have been calling that he should not be sworn in till after, this, till after the judgment. So, the question now is, if judgment is not given by 29th of May, what happens? Yes, we know all the provisions. People have been saying the speaker should take over. It might see the truth is this. It is not good to lay a bad, a bad precedent. Because to corrupt a bad president is not always easy. For me, I don't see anything there. So all I all, all, all I know, and personally, everybody that has been declared winner by INEG, whether a governor, a, a president, House of Reps, senators, by 29th May should be sacrosanct, and that is what you have been practicing. Then let the court, if the court cannot finish or cannot finish the adjudication in court. Let the court continue. 
After all, it happened in Anambra. It happened in so many states. So why are we crying foul now? Do you think those who are calling for this um, amendment may have some, some, some motives, ulterior motives? Especially those who are saying that uh, the president-elect should not be sworn in on May 29th, uh, pending when the cases are trashed at the tribunal. Do you think or do you see them as people who have uh, ulterior motives, who, whose intentions are not good for the country? Well, the truth is that whether they have ulterior motives or not, for me, is immaterial. But you see, let me tell you, uh, for me, nobody is above the law. And you have a law in place already. We have a modus operandi already. So you cannot, because of one person or the other, and shift the goalposts of justice if for one reason or the other or for self-glorification. You see, let me tell us one thing. We should be careful. And I keep on telling people that you should be careful the laws you make when you are angry. Because one day, you will be happy. And also the laws you make when you are happy. Because one day, you will also be angry. So vis-a-vis -vis what is happening, we should also be careful. The matter has gone to court. Let us allow the court to do the issue. Whether it's before 29th May or whether it's after 29th May, the most important thing is that at the end of the day, the court will make a pronouncement. As simple as that. Yes, indeed, let the courts do the, the, the give us the judgment. But how, how do you respond to, to the saying that the, the concern basically is because We've never had any presidential election upturned uh, by the courts in this country. Could that be a major reason why those who are clamoring for uh, the president-elect not to be sworn in on May 20, 29th be the reason? Could that be the reason? All right. Uh, we just lost contact with our guest, Justice Uhwe, human rights lawyer, who has joined us to take a look at the call for the amendment of the Electoral Act. Well, that does it for our very first hot topic on the program this morning. We'll take a break to come back and take a look at the impact of Nollywood on our culture. Stay with us. <laughs>